from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering IBM Think 2018. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live on day one of the inaugural IBM Think 2018 event. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante, and we are in sunny Vegas at the Mandalay Bay. Excited to welcome to theCUBE one of the IBM fellows, Nami Kurlip. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much. So you are not only an IBM fellow, but you're also um, an IBM Analytics Technical Leadership Team Chair. Tell us about that, your role on that technical leadership team. What are some of the things that you're helping to drive? And maybe even give us some of the customer um, feedback that you're helping to infiltrate into IBM's technical direction. Okay, so, so basically the technical leadership team is the, is the group of top uh, technical leaders in the IBM Analytics group. And uh, you know, we are kind of chartered by uh, evaluating the new technologies providing the guidance to our business uh, leaders into what to invest, what to de-invest, listening to our customer requirements, listening to how the customer is actually using the technology and making sure that IBM is uh, timely there when it's needed. And uh, also a very important element of the technical leadership team is also to promote the innovation, uh, innovative activities particularly kind of grassroots innovative activities, meaning you know, helping our, our technical leaders across the analytics to encourage them you know, to come up with innovation, to, to, to present their ideas to that, to follow up on those, to potentially turn them into projects and so on. So that's, that's, that's it. And, and guide them or just sort of send them off to discover? As a matter of fact, we should be probably mostly sounding board. So not necessarily you know, that th this is coming from down, top, top down, but trying to encourage them, trying to incite them, trying to kind of uh, you know, make, the, make that an innovative activity interesting and uh, also at the same time make sure that they see that there's something coming out of it. It's not just you know, they are coming up and then nothing's happening, but you know, trying also to turn that into the reality by working with our business developers, which, which by the way, who by the way, the control the resources, right? So, in order to do something like that. How about, how much of it is um, guiding folks on, on, who want to go down a certain path that maybe you know has been attempted before in that particular way and say, you know what, probably better to go, to go elsewhere. Or do you let them go and make the same mistake? Is there any of that, like don't go down that, don't, don't go through that door. Well, as you, as you can imagine, it's a human, you know, to, to attempt to say, well, you know, I've already tried, already done. But you know, I, we are really trying not to do that. Yeah. We're trying not to do that, trying to have an open mind, because uh, in this industry in which we are, there's always new set of opportunities and new conditions. And even if we are going to talk about you know, like our current topic, about like a fast data and so on, uh, I believe that many of these things have been around already. We just didn't know how to actually how to help, how to support something like that. But now, with this new set of technologies, we can actually do that. So let's get into the fast data. I mean, you know, wasn't too long ago, we just asked an earlier guest, what inning are we at in IOT? He said the third inning. It wasn't long ago, that we were in the third inning of Hadoop and everything was batch, and then all of a sudden, big data changed, everything became streaming, real time, fast data. What do you mean by fast data? You know, what is it? What's the state of fast data inside IBM? Well, thank you for that question because I also wanted, when I was preparing a bit of this interview, of course I wanted first to, that we are all on the same page in terms of what fast data actually means, right? And like, and there is of course, in our industry, it's a full of hype and misunderstanding and everything else. And uh, like many other things and concepts, actually it's a not fundamentally new thing. As it's just the fact that the current state of technology and enhancements in the technology allow us to do something that we couldn't do before. So the requirements for the fast data value proposition were always there. But right now, technology allows us actually to derive the real time insight out of the data, irrespective of that data volume, variety, velocity. And when I just said that three Vs, it sounds like a big data, right? Yeah. And as a matter of fact, there is a you know, pretty large intersection with big data, but there's a huge difference. And a huge difference that typically big data is really associated with data at rest. While the fast data 
is really associated with the data in motion. So the, the examples of that particular patterns are all over the place. I mean, you can think of like a click stream stuff. You can think about ticker financial data, right? You can think about manufacturing IoT data, sensors, logs. And the, the, the spectrum of industries that they take advantage of, of that are all over the place. You know, from financial and retail, from manufacturing, from utility, all the way to, to uh, advertising, to agriculture and everything else. So, I like, for example, very often when I talk about fast data, people first drop immediately into, let's say, you know, these are YouTube streaming, or this is, you know, Facebook, Twitter uh, kind of postings and everything else. And while this is true, and certainly there are business cases built on something like that, what interests me more are the use cases like, for example, Airbus, right? With 10,000 sensors in each of the wings, producing like a seven terabytes of information per day, which, by the way, cannot be just a dump somewhere and do, like before and then do some batch processing on it, but you actually have to process that data right there when it happens, that millisecond, because you know the ramifications are pretty, pretty serious about that, right? Or take, for example, opportunity in the in the uh, utility industry, like in a power electricity, where the distributors, manufacturers, really entice people to put these smart metering in place. So they, they can basically measure the, the, the consumption of the, of the power, electricity power, basically on, a, on an hourly basis. And instead of giving you once a, a, a yearly re, kind of bill of what it is, to know that all the time, what is the consumption, to react on a, on a spikes, to avoid blackouts, and come up with a totally new set of business models in terms of you know, offering some special incentives for, for spending or not spending, adding additional manufacturers. I mean, fantastic use, kind of set of use cases. I mean, I believe that Gartner said that by 2020, like 80% of the businesses will have some sort of kind of situational awareness of location, which is not a word of basically, you know, using this kind of capability of event-driven messaging. And I, I agree with that 100%. So it's data, fast data is data that is analyzed in real time. Right. Uh, such that you can affect an outcome. Right. Uh, before, before what? Before something bad happens, before the, you lose the buyer, before? Up, uh, <laughs> all over the place, you know, mm -hmm. before fraud happens in financials, mm -hmm. right. Before manufacturing lines breaks, right? Before, you know, airplane, or something happens with the airplane. And th so there are many, many, many examples of something like that, right? Uh, and when we talk about that, I mean, what we need to understand, again, even the technologies that are needed in order to deliver fast data value propositions are kind of known technologies. I mean, what you really need. You need a, you need a very scalable pub-sub messaging system like Kafka, for example, right? In order to, to, to acquire the data. Then you need a system which is typically streaming system, streams, and you have a tons of the offerings in the open source uh, 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 space like, you know, Apache Spark streaming, you have a Storm, you have a, a, a Flink, Apache Flink product, as well as you have our IBM Stream capabilities for really the, the kind of enterprise quality of service delivery. And then very importantly, and this is something that I hope we will have time to talk today, is you also need to be able to, to basically absorb that data. And not only do the analytics on the fly, but also to store the data and combine the, with the analytics with the data that is historical. And typically for that, what, 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 uh, uh, if you read what people are kind of suggesting what to do, you have also lots of open source uh, uh, technologies that can do that, like Cassandra, like some HDFS based systems and so on. But what I'm saying is all of them come with this kind of complexity that yes, you kind of land data somewhere, but then you need to put it somewhere else in order to do the analytics. And basically you are introducing the latency between data production and data consumption. Mm -hmm. And this is why I believe that the technology like DB2 Event Store that we announced just yesterday is actually something that will come very, very uh, 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 interestingly and very powerful part of the whole fast data uh, story. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Fast data as a term, and thank you for clarifying what it means to IBM, isn't new, but to your point, as technology is evolving, it's opening up new opportunities. Much 
like it sounds like kind of the innovation lab that you have within IBM, there might be, Dave was asking, uh, ideas that people bring that aren't new, maybe they were tried before, but maybe now there's new enabling technologies. Tell us about how is IBM enabling um, organizations, whether they're fast-paced, innovative startups, to enterprise organizations, not create that sort of latency and actually achieve mm -hmm. the business benefits that fast data can help them achieve today with today's, or rather, technologies that you're announcing at the right. show. Right. So again, you know, let's go through these uh, stages that I said that every fast data technology and project and solution should really probably have. As I said, first of all, you need to have some messaging pub, pub system, and I, I believe that the systems like Kafka are absolutely enough for something sure. like that. Then you need a system that's going to take this data of that fire hose coming from the Kafka, which is stream, stream technology. So, but, and as I said, lots of technologies in open source, but IBM Stream as a technology is something that has also hundreds of different basically models, whether it's predictive analytics, whether it's prescriptive analytics, whether machine learning, basically kind of AI elements, you know, text to speech, that you can apply on the data on the wire, with the wire speed. So you need that kind of enterprise quality of service in terms of applying the analytics mm -hmm. on the data that is streaming. And then we come to the DB2 event store, basically repository for that firehose data, where you need to put this data in the format in which you can basically immediately, without any latency between data creation, and data consumption, do the analytics on it. That's what we did with our DB2 event store. So not only that we can ingest like a millions and of, of uh, uh, events per second, literally millions and millions of events per second, but we can also store that in a basically open format, which is tremendous value. It's, remember, any database system basically in the past stores data in its own format. So you have to use that system that created data in order to consume that data. Yeah, you know, it, sure. What event, DB2 Event Store does is actually it ingests that data, but it puts it into the format that you can use any kind of open source product, like for example, Spark Analytics, to do the analytics on the data. You can use Spark machine learning libraries to do immediately kind of you know, machine learning modeling as well as scoring on that data. So I believe that that particular element of event store, coupled with a tremendous capability to, to, uh, to acquire data, is what makes a really differentiation. And it does that how? Through a set of APIs that allows it to be read so, and consumed? So basically when the data is coming off the hose, you know, out the streams or something like that, what, what event store actually does, it puts the data, it's basically in memory database, right? It puts the data in memory. Something else that's been around forever. It, exactly, <laughs> something else, you yeah, know. We just need, we just have more of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and guess what, you know, if it is in memory, it's going to be faster than if it is on disk. What a surprise. Yeah. So, so of course, you know, when the, when, put the data in the, in, into the memory and immediately makes it basically available for querying if you need this data that just came in. But then, kind of asynchronously, offloads the data into basically Apache Parquet format okay. into the columnar store, basically allowing very powerful analytical capabilities immediately on that data. And again, if you like, you can go through event store to query the data, but you don't have to. You can basically use any kind of the tool like Spark, like Python or Anaconda stack to, be, to go after the data and do the analytics on it, to build the models on it, and so on. And that asynchronous transformation is fast? It's the, the asynchronous transformation is such that it gives you this data, which we now call historical data, in a let, let, basically in a minute. Okay. So it's a kind of like a minute. A so very, reasonably low latency. But what's very important to understand, that actually the union of that data, yep. and the data that is in the memory on this one, which we by the way make uh, transparent, can give you 100% what we call kind of trans almost transactional consistency of your queries mm -hmm. against the data that is kind of coming in. So it's really in a hybrid uh, 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 kind of store of the, of the uh, memory, in memory, very fast log, because we also are logging this data in order for, to, to, to have it for, for high availability across multiple things, because this is highly scalable. I mean, it's highly what we call web scale kind of application uh, database. And then parquet format for the open source storing of the data for historical analysis. 
let's, in, in our last uh, 30 seconds or so, give us an example, I know this was just announced, but maybe a, a customer genericize in terms of the business benefits that uh, one of the beta customers is achieving leveraging this technology. Right. So, so, so in order for customers really to take advantage of all that, as I said, what I would suggest to customers to do, first of all, to understand where these situational awareness applications are actually make sense for them. Where the data is coming in, in fire hoses, not you know, through tra traditional transactional capabilities, but through the fire hose, where does it come? And then apply these technologies, as I just said, you know, acquisition of the data, streaming uh, uh, on, on the wire analytics, and then event DB2 event store as a store of the data. For all that, what you also need, just to tell you, you also need kind of messaging runtime, which typically products like, for example, ACA technology, and that's why we have also, we have entered also in partnership with, with the, uh, the Lightman in order to d deliver the entire ex uh, kind of experience for customers that want to build applications that run on a fast data. So maybe enabling customers to become more proactive, maybe predictive eventually? To enable customers to take advantage of this tremendously business relevant data, that is data that's coming in the is it a clickstream, is it, is it financial data, is it IOT data, and com to combine it with the assets that they already have coming from transactions. So that's a powerful combination. That basically they can build totally brand new business models as well as enhance existing ones to, to something that is, that, that is going to you know, improve productivity, for example, or improve the, the customer satisfaction, or broaden the customer segments, and so on and so on. Well, Namik, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE and sharing uh, the insight of the announcements. And uh, it's a pretty cool, Dave. I'm sitting between you and an IBM but, fellow. Yeah, that's, that's uh, pretty good for a Monday. It's Monday, isn't it? Not, thank you so much. Not, not easy to become an IBM fellow. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. And thanks thank again. You. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, our pleasure. For Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. We are live at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. Nice sunny day today, where we are on our first day of three days of coverage at IBM Think 2018. Check out our CUBE conversations on thecube.net. Head over to siliconangle.com to find our articles on everything we've done so far at this event and other events and what we'll be doing for the next few days. But stick around, Dave and I are going to be right back with our next guest after a short break. Thank <laughs> you.